I'll sit nervously awaiting a verdict in the Kyle Rittenhouse trial. It's been going on for some time, but as I like to say in these midday segments, the nightmare dystopia is still happening. We still have to talk about what's going on as we await that verdict. And it's actually kind of a funny story. It's kind of a scary story. But a few days ago, we heard Austrian police were going around randomly checking people's papers. I tweeted, the Nazis are back because, you know, that's what they would do. Papers, please prove you are who you are and fall in line. It was funny. Austria announced one of the one of the most insane policies we've ever seen, a lockdown only for the unvaccinated. Well, those of us who aren't stupid quickly saw through the ruse. Now, of course, most of us, I don't believe we are Austrian, but many of you may be, or at least some of you may be. You see, the ruse was, I don't believe for a second the lockdown will only be for the unvaxxed. And surprise, surprise, we were right. You see, here's what happens. They go out and they say, if you are not vaccinated, you have to stay home if the hospitals are at a certain level and we'll let you know. Or you can just get the vaccine and then you can go out and do whatever you want. Well, a lot of people probably said, OK, you know what, I'll just go out and get the vaccine. They've constantly, government officials in various countries, tried to play this game where they're like, hey, here's an incentive for you to get the vaccine. And then if people don't do it, they just escalate anyway. In the US, we had a bit of positive reinforcement first. Lotteries, win a million dollars if you get the vaccine. You get a hundred bucks, you get a free beer. I think there's a brothel offering free adult relations. Well, In Austria, they just said, if you want to leave your house, get the vaccine. And it was like three days later, they said, by the way, the lockdown's back for everyone. How stupid do you have to be? Seriously, how stupid do you have to be to think this is ever going to stop until you demand it does? Now, I'm not confident. I'm not confident. The Republicans are going to get us anything. So you've got to primary these individuals right now in Virginia. There's this, there's the big story, you know, Glenn Youngkin wins and the Democrat loses. And everyone's like, how is this possible? And then Youngkin is like, the first thing I'm going to do is hire some woke people. And then we're going to uh, he states if, if, if counties want to do mandates, it's OK. Congratulations, la resistance. You voted for a guy who's just like you know, Democrat light. And that's what the Republican establishment tends to be. You got to primary these people over in Austria. Their 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 little uh, short stint of only the vaxxed can go outside is over because now they're imposing a nationwide vaccine mandate. I believe this is the first country to do so. Many you, you could argue the U.S. has done a government mandated vaccine mandate uh, or, uh, you know, vaccine program. But You know, Joe Biden was like for businesses with 100 or more people, it wasn't literally like you all must or else. And the courts struck him down. There's some dark stuff happening in in this in the West, on the planet right now as to how it pertains with covid and this vaccine. And a lot of people take it to a conspiratorial place. I can't tell you. I can't tell you because I don't know. I can I can be rational and logical for you and say like, hey, look, when they came out and said 15 days to slow the spread, we all agreed we were like, OK, that sounds reasonable. And then we all decided we'd wait a couple of weeks, but then it never stopped. It extended, it extended, it kept extending. It's been almost two years and we've been under some kind of restriction in various parts, various parts of the country. Now, for the most part, the harsh lockdowns ended this summer. So that's a fair point to say it was actually a year. But you look at the you look at the news articles. Just one shot provides you with, you know, lots of, uh, you know, protection. They said the vaccine mandate in New York, you just need one dose. Well, I don't know if they've changed it in New York yet, but then the news came out saying two doses. Of course, two doses is the full dose. Then they came out and said two masks. Then they came out and said, even if you're mask, even if you're vaccinated, you got to wear a mask. Now they're saying three in the UK, three. And I've got, you know what? I don't like to call out individuals uh, in this manner, but I think it's important to do so. This is a journalist, someone that I follow. And I mean, I mean, no disrespect to this individual uh, 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 who follows me back. So I'm not going to say the name, but you know, you can see the tweet because I think this is really, really important context for people to understand what's happening. This journalist says, folks, you can get your booster today. And while you're there, get the flu vaccine. And if you haven't gotten a TDAP since grade school, like most of us, grab that one too. You'll be free to cut yourself on rusty metal without fear of tetanus. Sweet, sweet freedom. Now, this individual, uh, again, I mean, no disrespect. You know, I follow this person. Uh, I try to be professional and cordial with other uh, writers for whatever reason. Uh, this individual is from Texas. 
But I suppose they, they live in New York now. Um, maybe not. I'm not entirely sure. But they have their, the, the photo is the vaccine card with three with three uh, uh, vaccines on it. And you can see there's a fourth slot. I'm showing this simply because I saw this as an individual who, without question, said, OK, I'll go get another shot. That's not the that's not the sentiment that I get when I talk to regular people. You know, I, I talk to regular working people and they're getting frustrated. They're getting angry. There's a, an anecdote I have about uh, someone uh, in my periphery. I'll just be, be careful about how I describe individual uh, individuals to protect their privacy who got vaccinated and then got covid and got kind of upset. And we've actually had at our office, we had two breakthrough cases, two uh, two employees who were vaccinated ended up getting sick. They didn't get that sick, but they got sick, noticeably sick. And many people would argue, well, the severity was much less. And I'm like, no, well, there's some other people who weren't vaccinated who were comparably sick. So I can't tell you that. What I can say is it shouldn't be a mandate. It shouldn't be a lockdown. It shouldn't be forced. As I always say, it's a personal decision. Look, I had a discussion with um, what were we talking about on the, on, the, on the IRL podcast members only segment. And I said, I don't care what you put in your body. That's your choice. And I mean it. It's not for me to decide. I'm very libertarian on recreational plant medicine. We'll call it that. That's what Cernovich calls it, plant medicine. There's a lot of things in this country that are illegal. I do not believe they should be. Victimless crimes. If you choose to imbibe alcohol, that's entirely upon you. Now, if you choose to imbibe alcohol, impair yourself, get in a car, that's a crime that I agree with. But if you're sitting in your house, you're being responsible, you're at a bar and you're like, I'm going to drink this. It's poison, but boy, do I feel good. Well, that's all you. That's all you. In some countries, in some places, there's a bunch of other drugs that are that are uh, legal, that are illegal in other places. I think Colorado legalized uh, psilocybin, uh, shrooms. I'm not entirely sure, but I think something like that. I'm very libertarian. So here's the way I put it. You know, you go to the doctor, you ask the doctor like, hey, my knee hurts. And if he wants to prescribe you Trinidad on a shot of pressure, you're not going to ask him what it is. I mean, you might, but you're not going to know. So when it comes down to any one of these things, you have the choice to go do whatever you want to do. And, and if somebody wants to choose to get seven, eight, nine, ten, you know, however many they eventually mandate, by all means, go ahead and do so. The problem is the mandates. The problem is the authoritarianism. Imagine this. Imagine the government came out and said, we know that alcohol reduces cortisol levels, you know, when, when imbibed in reason. Therefore, we hereby mandate everybody have one beer per day. They say it's healthy. Or how about a glass of red wine with resveratrol in it? It's good for you, right? It'll keep you healthy. It's for your own safety. And then everyone's going around. You try to go to a bar and they're like, whoa, your, your blood alcohol level is way too low to come in. I mean, I don't like that idea. Don't mess with bodily autonomy. Well, this is what we get in Austria. Facing a surge, Austria will mandate COVID-19 shots and lockdown. So they lied to you. They told you just Get the shot. Only the unvaccinated have to stay home. And now you do, too. It's a bit unprecedented, isn't it? They say Austria announced a new national lockdown and a plan to mandate vaccinations. Imposing a mandate would give Austria one of the world's most stringent vaccine requirements. Chancellor Alexander Schallenberg said those who didn't comply would likely be fined, but gave no other details. The moves come as vaccinations in Austria have plateaued at one of the lowest rates in Western Europe and as hospitals in heavily hit states have warned that their intensive care units are reaching capacity. But earlier this month, Schallenberg indicated a full lockdown would not be needed and instead impose restrictions only on those not vaccinated. Well, that was a lie, wasn't it? Isn't it obvious to all of us? They said they first they were like, if you first they said, look, even if you get the vaccine, keep wearing your mask. And everyone said, what, what is going on? And they said, OK, OK, if you get the vaccine, you don't got to wear the mask anymore. And everyone was like, oh, that makes sense. And everybody rushed out and got vaccinated and they came right back and said, actually, now you got to wear masks again. So this is where we're at. So long as we just allow people in government, elite billionaires to dictate when these people don't know what they're doing or they do. And it's for nefarious purposes. It's never going to change. You'll never get your freedom back. Man, I'm just so many people complied, complied, complied and kept saying, you know, I'm not going to say anything because it'll all be over. By the time I get my fifth vaccination, that's when they'll finally open the doors. There's a tweet, funny viral tweet, where this guy said the unvaxxed are in for a reckoning because as soon as five to 11 year olds are all vaccinated, everything goes back to normal and then they'll regret it because they'll get sick. And I'm, and I'm just like, you know, that meme. Oh, you oh my sweet summer child. You actually believe that 
You believe that once they vaccinate the kids? No, there's already been discussions about vaccines for toddlers and infants. We give vaccines to kids. I think that's between you and your doctor. None of my business what you're getting for your kid. But we do have vaccines for babies. They go in and they get their inoculations. They come back to get their boosters. It's a normal thing. I got them when I was a kid. The point is, not that there's anything wrong with vaccines. Granted, the mRNA vaccine is a new type of vaccine technology, depending on how you describe them. But it's just, you know, parents ultimately have the final say and should be allowed to decide. Austria, however, let me show you a tweet. Let me show you my vision of the future. The year is 2025. You go to the DMV to renew your license. How many of you have a license right now that will expire in 2025 or 2026? And so you're like, I better get it renewed. You walk in and you, 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 go, you go online, you look up everything you need. You walk in, you sit down, and, and you've probably done this. You know, when you're renewing your license, it's fairly easy. You hand it to them and then you, you know, give them a piece of mail with, it, with your address and you're good. So let's do this. Let me correct that tweet because maybe I need to be a little bit more um, just uh, uh, correct as, as per how it, how it works. So you need to get a new license because you moved. You say lived in New Jersey and you moved to West Virginia. And so you have a driver's license. You don't got to take a test, but you do need all standard forms of ID. That means that it's like a point system, six points. A credit card is one point. A passport is two points. You need a birth certificate or whatever. So you walk in. It's 2025 and you bumble over and you sit down and they say next and you walk over and you sit down and they say, do you have all of your paperwork? And you go, yeah, I've got my uh, here's my ID. Uh, you know, here's my ID. Here's my passport. I have two credit cards and here's my utility bill. And she goes, and do you have your vaccine card? And you go, oh, yeah, I do. And you hand it to her, hand it to her. And she goes, sir, this says your last shot was three months ago. And you go, oh, was it three months ago? Sir, this is not an up to date vaccination card. You're going to have to go and get a booster and then come back. And they hand you all your paperwork and say, we'll see you tomorrow. There's a there's a there's a CVS. No, no, there's a pop up in the parking lot about a few blocks down. Go over there and then come back, get it updated. And you go, oh, I can't believe I didn't get my vax card updated before I came in. Must have slipped my mind. The year is 2050. And 20 year old dude is going in to get his license changed. And he walks in with his, uh, you know, mobile app. He walks up and they scan it. They do a, a retinal scan and a fingerprint check or I don't know, maybe that's a little bit too retro, actually. Biometrics. We don't need that. He walks in and he gives them his, his, his information and everything. And they say, oh, we see that you've gotten your vaccine last week. So you're up to date. Wonderful. And uh, do you have, uh, oh, oh, I'm sorry. You don't have SARS, SARS 20, uh, COVID-23 and the flu on here. And he goes, oh, I thought we just needed, uh, um, you know, tetanus, hep, uh, um, you know, uh, mumps, rubella. No, no, no. They expanded it. They expanded it. And you go, ah, oh, geez. I'll tell you what's going to be funny. You know, when you're getting your ID done, you go online, you go to the DMV's website and you try and look up what you need. I know you've all done it because I just did it recently. You go in there and you're like, OK, what forms of ID do I need? And it says a passport is worth two points. It counts as a social security card or a birth certificate and an ID. And you're like, oh, that's really great. And then an ID counts as two points because of blah, blah, blah. And then your credit card is one and you need a total of six. So you bring in like three things and then you bring in proof of address. You looked up everything you need in the future. You're going to go on the website and it's going to be like, OK, I need six points of ID and I need eight points of vaccination. And then you're going to look and you're going to be like, OK, I have to, you, these are mandatory. You got to have uh, tetanus, typhus, hep A. You've got to have yellow fever. You've got to have uh, uh, mumps. Uh, mer, uh, what is it? What MMR. So that's uh, mumps. What is it? Rubella. What's the middle one? I don't know. I don't remember. And then you're like, OK, I got all those. And then you got to have them all within the past year. And so you go in and you have your, your, you know, your, your Vax app or whatever. The point is, kids in the future, they're going to grow up with this stuff and they're not going to challenge it. Have I made a video questioning Social Security numbers? I mean, think about it. We all have a registration number with the government. You're born and then your parents say, OK, before a certain point, we got to go get you your government registration number. I mean, that's kind of crazy, isn't it? It's like a, it's like out of something out of a sci fi dystopia. The government registers your number. Yeah, well. There you go. So I don't make videos where I'm like, can you believe we all have to do this? No, we all do it. We all don't care. So in the future, when all these kids are doing this, they all won't care. They won't know better. There may be some people, but I'll tell you something funny. I'll tell you, I saw this story from CNN. No vaccine required is the latest tactic to attract workers. That is amazing. 
It's amazing. Should we start putting on our job uh, requests like, you don't need to be vaccinated? You know what I do like? I like testing. I like testing. That's fine. When uh, when we had our COVID outbreak at our at our office, I basically said, if you're feeling sick, take a test. If you test positive, work from home until you test negative because we don't want people to get sick. I don't care if you have a cold. I don't care if you have the flu. I don't care what it is. If you have a contagious sickness, don't come into work. And so uh, because COVID is severe as it is, and it is, it is, I'm not saying it's airborne Ebola, but it's really bad. Ask people who've got it. I got it. Oh, it was really, really bad. Ian got it. Oof, he was really bad. But at the very least, it's just like, look, it's a novel virus. That's the big deal. Everybody gets sick because they've no immunity to it. Well, now they do. So the way I put it was like, look, we're not doing testing mandates. We're not going to mandate people who are healthy come in every day and do testing. Some businesses do that. No, we're just going to say, if you're feeling ill, don't come in, no matter what sickness you have. Nobody wants to get sick. And if you know you have COVID, just get a negative test and then come on back. And then we're not going to test you again if you're healthy. I think that's a, a reasonable uh, uh, restriction to make. So for the most part, you go, out your, go about your business like normal. And you know, if you get sick, you stay home. What's the big deal? Well, we don't require vaccinations here at Timcast Media. And a bunch of companies don't. And apparently, it's attracting workers. CNN. Of course, CNN reports in search for, uh, in the search for workers in the tight labor market. Companies have courted new hires with a promise of higher wages, sign on bonuses, ample vacation time and child care. The latest, no vaccine required. That three word phrase is popping up across the online job listings as businesses seek to turn the federal government's proposed vaccine decree on its head and attract employees. You know what? A non vaccine requirement is actually fairly interesting as it pertains to um, a job hire. And I'm not saying it's a good thing, but just hear me out. I have this story I tell people about a friend of mine who hired some college grads. He was doing social media management. He hired a couple college grads and they couldn't do the job. They were struggling. They would constantly call saying, what do I do? And he was like, solve the problem. I hired you to do this job. You run Instagram. And he had to fire him. He's like, if you can't do it, I'm sorry. I have to let you go. So then he tries to find better people, hire some more college grads. Same problem. Well, now he's running out of money because they're not doing their job properly. It's a true story, by the way. And he, he then hires a couple people who wanted to be actors who had moved from middle America to California. He's paying them substantially less than he paid the college grads because now he's broke and he's like, I guess I'll reach deeper into the barrel. So no phone calls, no problems. He gets worried. He's like, well, certainly they call me for something. He comes back to the office and he goes, uh, how was today? Like, we got it all covered, boss. Everything was great. Were there any issues? Yeah, uh, one of our clients wanted to post an image. We, we talked him through it. We ended up getting a, a better resolution image. Everything was fine. It's like, really? You didn't need my help? And they're like, no. And what he realized was people who knew what they wanted, they left their home in search of adventure, took initiative. And the people who had college degrees just did what they were told. The college degree was actually a predictor of docile and drone-like behavior. So I think about it this way. Someone who's not vaccinated, not necessarily true that they'll be smarter than anybody else. They may just be lazy. They may be conspiracy theorists. But there is something to be said for seeing that someone says, I'm looking for a job where vaccines aren't required, and then asking them why. According to, uh, there was a study published, PhDs were, I believe, the most likely to not be vaccinated. And there, uh, there was another study, I think it was Harvard, that said those who were refusing uh, to be vaccinated were likely to be more informed. You see, I'm not saying it's a, it's a it's a fact. And we've got people who work here who are vaccinated and unvaccinated and everybody knows the news. I mean, they listen to me talk about it all day. We've had guests on Timcast IRL, mostly libertarian, moderate, conservative, and a good portion of them, probably half are all vaccinated. I just don't care. I mean, you do whatever you want to do. Whatever. Just don't get me sick. Don't show up if you're sick. It's fine. But I wonder if you're looking at a resume and they say they're not vaccinated, is that a predictor of someone who's likely going to have a better understanding of current events and be more likely to think critically or more importantly, regardless of how smart or stupid they may be, is it a sign that they've chosen for themselves? They take initiative. And if that's the case, maybe they will be better workers. And if that's the case, maybe in this tight labor market, companies that say no vaccine required are likely going to get more talent. I don't know. It's all very speculative. The one thing I can tell you is that if you keep complying, you will just end up like Austria. They'll lock you down harder than ever before. You take a look at Florida, some of the lowest rates of COVID in the country. 
California, according to one story, has twice the rate of, uh, of COVID as Florida, even though Florida has no mandates. They've they've been open for a long time. No mask mandates, no vax mandates, monoclonal antibodies. And the South seems to be doing fairly well. There's a viral tweet from a guy who was like, can anyone explain to me why the southern states all have low instances of covid, but everyone else? And it's like, huh? Interesting question. It could very well be the weather. I mean, seriously, it's warmer, it's hotter, it's murkier, and maybe covid transmits better in the cold. I honestly don't know. Or it could be Texas and southern states and Florida have no, none of these restrictions, so people are able to get sunlight, get vitamin D, exercise, and live their lives. And because they're more likely to be outdoors, they're less likely to actually interact with the virus. Okay, Austria, you're playing a game of Russian roulette because the data is available. Maybe it's not really about them caring, or maybe they're just completely inept. But there you go. What greater bit of evidence that if you comply, they will just smack you down harder. You give them an inch and they will take 100 miles that's what they did in Austria. That's what they did here. That's what they're doing in the UK. That's what they're doing in France. What they're doing in Germany. That's what they're going to keep doing everywhere. So that being said, I really got to get back to watching what's going on with the Rittenhouse trial. And I know all of you do too, but thanks for watching something as we're staring at a courtroom video with an emblem and nothing else. 4 p.m. I have a major, major story. So maybe something will happen in between with Rittenhouse and the verdict. But I've got a crazy story for you. I will see you all at 4 p.m. over at youtube.com slash Timcast. Thanks for hanging out.